now we will derive any we are going to derive an equation for the work done when the combustion takes place polytropic before going to explain i need to tell you one thing please go through our part 1 video then only you will understand this video because the equations which we are going which are which we are going to use here were already explained in the previous video that is the reciprocal air compressor part 1 so after uh, going through the part 1 you need to go through part 2 then only you will understand so now we will derive uh, we are going to derive the equation for polytropic compression we know the polytropic process are nothing but the pressure and volume are related by an equation PV raised to N is equal to a constant where N represents the polytropic index. So since PV raised to N is equal to a constant we can write it as P1 V1 raised to N is equal to P2 V2 raised to N is equal to a constant. We will take the first two terms so that is pv raised to n is equal to p1 v1 raised to n and you will bring this p to other side so you have vn is equal to p1 v1 raised to n divided by p then this n when it comes to this side it will become 1 by n so v is equal to p1 v1 raised to n divided by p the whole raised to 1 by n so what we have to do here is you just write the polytropic basic formula that is polytropic process relationship P V raised to N is equal to constant then expand like this P1 V1 raised to N is equal to P2 V2 raised to N is equal to constant take the first two term obtain an expression for V ok now after that you know the formula for calculating work for a compressor that is integral V D P minus integral V D P the minus sign represents it is a power absorbing device. Compressor is a power absorbing device. We put the limit 1 and 2 on the integral. So minus integral 1 to 2 VDP is a formula for calculating work. We already derived an expression for V in the previous slide. So just substitute that V here. So you will get an expression like this minus integral 1 to 2 p1 v1 raised to n divided by p the whole raised to 1 by n into dp just take a piece of paper or a book and write the equation along with me so that it will be more clear so you just bring p1 since it is since we need to differentiate integrate with respect to dp here this p1 and v1 both are constant so bring it out so p1 the whole raised to 1 by n bring it out and P1 raised to N the whole raised to 1 by N it will become V1 because N and 1 by N when we multiply it will become 1 so minus P1 raised to 1 by N V1 both these are constant bring out and then the equation become 1 divided by P the whole raised to 1 by N 1 divided by P means P raised to minus 1 by N dp. so you are left with an equation minus P1 the whole raised to 1 by N into V1 into integral P1, P raised to minus 1 by N into dp. Then, when you apply integral, you know the formula for integral x raised to N. What is the formula for integral x raised to N? Integral x raised to N means x raised to N plus 1 divided by N. So, apply that equation here. That is, minus P1 raised to 1 by N, V1 is already constant. When you apply that and up, when you uh, apply the formula that is uh, integral x raised to n uh, and apply the limit 1 and 2 you will get an equation like this p2 raised to minus 1 by n plus 1 minus p1 divided by 1 by n plus 1 the whole divided by minus 1 by n plus 1 okay so bring this minus 1 by n plus 1 outside so you will get p1 raised to 1 by n v1 into 1 divided by this 1 minus 1 by n. Inside you will left like this. I will rewrite, rearrange this equation as P2 raised to 1 minus 1 by n and P1 raised to 1 minus 1 by n. After that, from this equation, take P1 raised to 1 minus 1 by n as common. So, 
P1 raised to 1 by N, V1 into 1 divided by, take the LCM, that means N minus 1 divided by N. Take uh, P1 raised to 1 by N common, so P1 raised to N minus 1 divided by N, because take LCM. So you are left with P2 divided by N minus 1 by N divided by P1 raised to 1 minus 1 divided by N minus 1. When you take this outside, here it will become 1. Then, you can see, here P1 raised to 1 by N and here P1 raised to N minus 1. So you have the identity x raised to a into x raised to b, x raised to a plus b. So you need to add 1 by n and n minus 1 divided by n. So when you add 1 by n and n plus n minus 1 divided by n, from both take n as LCM. So 1 plus n minus 1 divided by n, this minus 1 plus 1 cancel, it will become 1. So the power of p1 will be 1. After solving these two terms, the power of P1 will get 1. Then V1 is there. Then this N minus 1 by N, when, up, when it, uh, we can re rewrite this equation, N minus uh, 1 divided by N as N into N divided by N minus 1. So, we will get an equation like this. Minus N divided by N minus 1 P1 V1. And uh, when we rewrite this equation you will get p2 divided by p1 because the power for both these terms are same so it will become p2 divided by p1 the whole way is to n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 so just write along with me so that you can easily understand so this is the formula for calculating the polytropic work done. here minus represents it is a power absorbing device that is here the work is done on the system so the formula for calculating the polytropic work done is n divided by n minus 1 p1 v1 into p2 divided by p1 the whole day is to n minus 1 divided by n minus 1. So <clears throat> for a polytropic process we have one more relationship. t2 divided by t1 is equal to p2 divided by p1 the whole day is to n minus 1 divided by n. This is from this equation is from the subject thermodynamics. So Replace this P2 by P1 the whole ratio n minus 1 by n by T2 divided by T1. So when you replace it with T2 divided by T1 and replace from Eidinger's equation, replace P1 V1 by MR T1. So when you take LCM, it will become T2 minus T1 divided by T1. That T1, T1 get cancelled. You are left with N divided by N minus 1 MR T2 minus T1. This is the formula for calculating the polytropic work done. There are two formulas. One is n divided by n minus 1 p1 v1 into p2 divided by p1 the whole day is to n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 and n divided by n minus 1 mr t2 minus t1. So these two formulas which we require while doing numerals. Now, what will happen when we perform the compression isentropic? So since these two equations, that is isentropic process and polytropic process, these two equations has some likeness, right? Here in N, here in terms of N, we are using gamma. So, we derive an expression for polytropic conversion like this, right? So, in this equation, when we replace this N with gamma, we will get the work for isentropic conversion. So, when we replace this, it will become gamma by gamma minus 1, it will become gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, Gamma by gamma minus 1, P1, V1 into P2 by P1, the whole is to gamma minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1. And you have the equation, uh, when you replace uh, N with gamma, then gamma by gamma minus 1, MR T2 minus T1. So, gamma by gamma minus 1, MR T2 minus T1. And you have the relationship, CP minus CV is equal to R. When you take CP constant, it will become 1 minus CV divided by CP. You know that CP by CV is gamma. So CV by CP is 1 by gamma. When you uh, take the LCM, it is gamma minus 1 divided by gamma. So you have the equation CP is equal to gamma divided by gamma minus 1. So when you replace this gamma by gamma minus into R, that is gamma divided by gamma minus 1 with CP, you will get an equation like this. MCP T2 minus T1. So for isentropic compression, there are three equations for doing numerals.
for doing numericals we need three equations first one is this one this equation is easily obtained by replacing n with gamma and this equation also uh, can be obtained by replacing n with gamma by this simple simplification we arrive this equation mcp t2 minus t1 now what will happen when we compress it isothermally you know that for an isothermal process you know that that is pv is equal to a constant that is isothermal process so PV is equal to P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2 is equal to constant. The same procedure we have done before in case of polytropic combustion. The same procedure we are applying in isothermal combustion also. First we apply the general formula. Then what we have to do is just take the first two terms, obtain an equation for V. Okay. After obtaining an equation for V, substitute here in this equation, general expression. And after that, here we are integrating with respect to dp. So p1, v1 are constant. We will take outside. And you are left with 1 divided by p. So integral 1 divided by p. We know that integral 1 by x is log x. So integral 1 divided by p is log p. When you apply upper limit minus lower limit, it will become log p2 minus log p1. You have the identity log a minus log b as log a by b so you will get minus p1 b1 ln p2 divided by ln p1 so this is the equation for calculating uh, the work and this p2 divided by p1 we call it as r that r represents the compression ratio that is what is p2 the outlet pressure of compressor and what is p1 the inlet pressure of compressor so the compression ratio is nothing but the ratio between outlet pressure and inlet pressure so minus P1 V1 ln R is equation for calculating isothermal compression. So for polytropic compression, we have the equation like n divided by n minus 1, P1 by P1 into P2 by P1 all raised to n minus 1 by n minus 1. And we have one more relationship for polytropic equation. Then for isentropic compression, we have three equations. And for isothermal compression, we have one equation. For both equations, we require for doing numerals. Now, we can compare, we can make a comparison. From uh, the PV diagram, what does it mean? You can see, just read, area under PV diagram represents work done. That is, the area under PV diagram represents work done. So, from this diagram, we can conclude one thing. For isothermal compression, the work will be minimum because the area for isothermal compression is the minimum compared to polytropic and adiabatic. So for isothermal compression, we require minimum work and for adiabatic, we require maximum work and polytropic work is between these two. So we can conclude that for isothermal work, the uh, work will be minimum and for polytropic work, for adiabatic work, the work will be maximum. So, for reciprocating compressor, isothermal efficiency is used to compare the actual work done during compression because it is that work requires the minimum work. So, isothermal work is used to compare the actual work done during compression. So, we define one efficiency, we call it as isothermal efficiency. Just understand it clearly, for reciprocating compressor, we are using isothermal efficiency but in case of rotary compressor, we are using isentropic efficiency. When it comes to rotary compressor, I will clearly explain the difference and why we are taking isentropic. At present, it is clear from the PV diagram that the minimum work is for isothermal from the uh, when we compare the three cases. So for reciprocating compressor, isothermal efficiency is used as a standard of comparison. So we define a term called isothermal efficiency. Isothermal efficiency is nothing but it is the isothermal work done divided by the actual work done. So isothermal work done divided by the actual work done. So higher the isothermal efficiency, higher means isothermal efficiency, higher means what? This is inversely proportional to actual work done, right? So actual work done will be when actual work done decreases, the efficiency increases, right? Because Isothermal efficiency is nothing but the ratio between isothermal work done and actual efficiency. When this decreases, this increases, right? So higher the isothermal efficiency means what? Actual work done approaches the ideal isothermal compression. Because the minimum work is isothermal compression, right? 
So higher the isothermal compression, isothermal efficiency means actual compression approaches the ideal isothermal compression. Clear? So uh, this is uh, a comparison between uh, a reciprocating air compressor. That is reciprocating air compressor, isothermal efficiency is commonly used as a standard of comparison. Okay. So in the upcoming videos, we will be discussing about how to calculate work done uh, what, uh, for, for a uh, compressor with clearance volume and what are the, uh, uh, what, uh, what are the, uh, how, uh, explain the working of uh, two